TPC, YouTube, all out there. Bit of a rainy, cold day here in Switzerland in the morning. It's eight degrees, so I'm warming up the shed and uh, still working on a bit of uh, blood red moon cult tobacco with my Dracula pipe. It's definitely burly forward because it produces a lot of smoke which I like because it's easy to regulate your uh, temperature. Nice tobacco, uh, not, not too over cherry at all really. It's, you could say it's mild, medium topping. And you pick up the tobaccos really in this blend, it's really nice. Well, yesterday I was out with some old chums from a chemical company that I used to work for, BASF, actually the largest one in the world, and German company, very, very good company. And it was great to see them again after two and a half years of COVID, you know. We used to do this raclette all the, every time this year. And in Basel, there's something called the Herbstmesser, which is basically a, a kind of um, uh, different places in Basel. They have a market and they have uh, amusements and you know uh, and lots of nice things to eat and mulled wine and all of that. You know, so um, it's a great time to visit Basel if you have a chance. And there's one particular place which does a fantastic raclette. You have to book it in advance because it's the best one. Actually, you could argue it's the best raclette you'll get in Switzerland. It's arguable. Well, I've got a picture of the first raclette I got. It's the biggest one I've ever had. Here it is. And I had two of those. And I realized I'm, my, my body doesn't function like a young man who would maybe have three or four of those with plenty of wine and wash it down um, but my digestion barely could manage two and actually the thing about a raclette like that is uh, it'll keep you awake at night and sort of dehydrate your body to a prune because it's got a lot of salt in it as well and sensation is rather like being filled with ready mix concrete which uh, you either drill out of your stomach or you um, you spend about three years to digest it you know um, I'm exaggerating of course but no it's absolutely delicious I tell you the flavors are absolutely beautiful well we had a lovely chat and caught up on what everyone's doing. It was a great bunch of mates they were at that company, I must say. I did enjoy my time there. One thing I wanted to share for quite a while is um, about sealing tins when you're tinning, jarring tobacco. I've shown this before, that you could use um, good old parafilm, this stuff, and that does a pretty good job sealing. So when you seal a tin, of course, you uh, primary seal is under the lid. So if you screw it tight, that should do a pretty good job. What I was trying to do with these additional seals is to sort of put a secondary protection on it to really try and make sure that they don't lose moisture because a lot of my jars are going to be a decade or longer uh, stored away. Um, now the parafilm works, uh, as I've said in past videos on this topic, pretty good around round lids. 
but over time they can it can split as the parafilm gets older as it's a it's more like a wax uh, film but it, it basically can dry out is the wrong word but it basically changes its structure becomes more crystalline in the, in the wax fields and and basically it can split and then if you've got even one split on this secondary seal won't really work because water vapor is a different thing to water uh, it'll find the tiniest gap and you'll be amazed how much is lost in, in moisture and how much effect that they can have um, so some of the jars I still use parafilm and I just check every year or so to every time I pick it up is that seal still good but then I started to use a lot more of this Teflon film here and um, I apologize to one of the commentators who said you're doing it wrong he didn't actually say what what I was doing wrong and I thought well I'm sure this is helping uh, that was my answer and I think that's true it is creating a, a, an external barrier but Teflon or plumber's tape of course I think he had a, a very good point and that is you're actually supposed you're actually supposed to put this on the thread on inside the jar so as nice as it is that I have put this uh, film on the outside what I should have really done and will do in future see that was holding the seal but the primary seal is is the one in there on the inside of the lid. Uh, what I should do, as I will show you in a little clip, is put it around the thread here and then screw this on top and that would create effectively a much better seal. So that's point number one. I'll show you all this in, in the clip I'm going to insert. But point number two is uh, if you buy plumber's tape, you'll notice there are different colors, at least the European norms. You can get uh, a red container, you can get a yellow container. And, and in fact, if you want gas grade, plumber's tape that's the one you want to get it's thicker than the uh, water grade plumber's tape you need the yellow one which is thicker tape and it's designed to be a barrier against gas well water vapor is effectively water molecules in a, in a ga gas form um, so big point is buy the yellow one it's a, it's you'll notice it's thicker and you'll notice a bit more expensive but not that much more but what I was doing with the red tape and I've still got some to use up is I'm going at least two or three times around to try and create uh, enough of a barrier but in future I'm only gonna, I'm gonna buy the, um, the yellow tape now there is a very good video where someone's looked at all of this and I'll put that in the bucket down below have a look he goes through all the different grades of tape and um, explains the same thing you know if you're especially if you're looking for a vapor seal which is what we're we're after so here we are um, and here I have some of those different tapes and uh, the parafilm. Um, you've seen this before, and uh, basically, I one of these rolls last 
last few several years, if not five years, and I take four segments and then cut it into strips and uh, wrap it around basically either the jar or sometimes in the past I wrap, wrapped it around the tins. I had a couple actually that I was still using parafilm and checked how the seal was. This one is okay. Um, but one of the others, as I mentioned, it, it's cracked and, and then of course it loses tension and uh, it's open. So that's the a bit the problem. And the round tins are not even the worst. Uh, the, the worst ones are the square tins and you really can't use parafilm to seal these ones. Um, now, almost a year ago, I've uh, sealed this up with tape on the outside and I'm curious to look at it to see how the humidity has uh, held up. Uh, knowing that these days I would probably put the tin on the inside. But generally the square tins, I think it's just not almost worth trying to do this. Uh, You'd you better to take it out and put it in a, in a jar, which is probably what I'm going to do here. I've almost uh, gone through my entire collection and made sure I don't have any more like this, but um, or any more that were like that. Uh, but uh, it just shows you that if you have a big collection, you could overlook it and they could dry out. Um, so we'll have a look at that. Um, what I'm going to do is just take this uh, tape off and uh, see if, if the flake is okay. Right, it's just a ribbon cut, this one. It's quite dry. It's not really totally dry. I can feel a bit of moisture in the depth of the tin, but uh, obviously that was ineffectual, I would say, to put some of this uh, Teflon plumber's tape around such a tin like this. So that will go into a jar with a hydrostone and hopefully be usable by Christmas. Um, let's have a look at this one. This one feels, so this was a flake that I rubbed out. This actually feels slightly better. Maybe almost about the right humidity so pro probably that crack tape had not been there for too long i'm just going to leave that and have have a look at it in uh, 20 minutes to see what the hygrometer comes up with uh, but this this seal has held um, let's just have a look at that one so I'm claiming that this probably one won't have dried out too much. Let's have a look. Because I think I used half of this tin and resealed it. Yeah, that, that's got a fair bit of moisture. It's not quite at the surface there. It's a little drier, but down if you mix it up, that's not too bad. So that's kind of worked. But as I said before, um, you know, this is something that you can do, but it's really for a few months, not really a year or something like that, then the, 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 these tins just won't have the, the great seal that they had when they were manufactured and sealed under vacuum. So uh, maybe everybody knows that, but <laughs> just shows I can always learn something. Fortunately, most of my uh, tins that I've started to consume or had open a while, I have jarred up. So 
There's probably only a very few like this in my collection that have been affected. Now, as, uh, as we talked about the, the color code, now that, that was uh, the video below is um, based on the color code and the standards of the uh, United States. And it may not be the same as I have here in Europe, but um, what I was talking about, if you look at this, this is the slightly cheaper uh, tape that is used for is used for water. And it's zero point eight thickness, twelve millimeters wide and twelve meters of, of tape. Um, doesn't really tell me that it's only for water, but that I think is what this red color would mean. And if I look at this one here, now this one has uh, 12 millimeter witness 0.1 millimeter. So it's 20% thicker. And then it also says here sauerstoff, which is oxygen. So it's obviously suitable for a gas. Now the oxygen tapes in the United States were green, but I think if you find anything that has gas or mentions a gas like oxygen, then it's going to be the thicker tape. Now that's not the only point about the quality. It's also a denser tape than the red one. So you may say, well, it's only 20% thicker than 0.08. That's true, but the density of this tape, you feel it when you open up, it's, uh, it feels thicker and it's harder to sort of, if I put it, you see my finger behind, you can see it, but the other tape, when I take it out, it's, it really feels much more flimsy and more light is coming through there. So the density of the tape is lower. And this is the one that I think is not to be used in future. And this one is one I'll be buying. It's only, I think maybe another franc on top to buy this quality. And this is the one I will be using. And what I will generally do is use it on the threads of the jar, of the glass jar. Uh, let me just show you that. So if we take a typical jar, now the video attached below, he says you need to keep a tension on the tape and there's the thread of the jar. What I would try to do, this is the first time I've actually tried to do it this way, is put the tape and there you see it's, you have to keep a tension until you until you're on to the other part of the tape and then overlap it. Now on the top of this, it says only 50%. You don't need to go twice around with this thicker and higher denser tape. Something like that. You see, 50% overlap only is is uh, required and that says it also on the American yellow tapes like this for gas and then basically put it here and then make it real tight and that should offer a secondary seal to the one on the inside of the lid and I hope that will perform better to keep uh, tobacco reasonably moist. Here's that dragon flake now, it's up to 70, which is the right moisture to smoke. So um, that didn't look, it still was all okay to smoke like this. I probably don't really need to rehydrate this one. But if I take the Christmas tobacco Let's have a look at that and what it thinks about it. So 
So I'll give it a, a few minutes and see where, where it ends up on this one. Well, it's just five minutes and it's gone down to the bottom of the range that would be okay. So maybe it would be okay uh, to smoke this still at this uh, level of humidity if I mixed it up because uh, the lower layer is probably slightly higher in humidity. But what I will do is put a hydrostone uh, in this tobacco and put it in this jar. <laughs> so let's have a look at the Fox Hibernia, how that has fared. That was sealed with parafilm and the parafilm had not um, broken or teared. So that should give me a good reading. Let's have a look. So that's about five minutes and um, the needle is right in the middle of the good zone. So. In this particular case, the Fox Hibernia, um, it's been okay uh, with this uh, parafilm seal around it. And that's uh, probably eight months since I uh, opened that tin and was smoking some of that uh, tobacco. So it can, it can work okay uh, for a few months, I think. Um, but the same thing will apply here. I will... Um, I'll try it since it's in the perfect zone, it's perfectly okay. I will try to seal it with this uh, yellow plumber's tape and see how that behaves and uh, let you know in a few months how, how it fares if it's sealed with that. Because it, it, this might, if you put it on the thread of the tin, it might give you a, an effective seal um, as an alternative but uh, finally the one surer way is to put them in jars <laughs> okay cheers so now it's uh, jarred up uh, 3rd of Oct 3rd of November uh, 2021 the J means uh, that's when it's been jarred not when I bought it and uh, RH means uh, uh, it's rehyd un under rehydration, in other words, there's stone in there. And there you see a bit of the tape on the thread. And let's see how that does uh, sitting there in, in a month or so when I open it again. Well, I think I'm gonna keep the uh, Halloween decorations up a little bit longer. Well, that's it for today. Keep this a bit shorter. I hope you're all wrapping up against the uh, coming cold weather and uh, keeping comfortable and cosy. That's the way to do it. You all take care. Look after yourselves. I'll see you in a few days with another topic.